Hey guys, welcome to the first part of acting like a developer. Today we're going to talk about getting into developer mode, what that means for you, what the easiest way is to get into that, and also the structure that Odoo is built on, uh, models and fields, and how they interact with each other. So let's get into it. So here we are in Odoo. We want to start acting like a developer or at least acting in a way that we can make some low level customizations to make the flow, uh, the information gathering inside of Odoo a little bit more efficient. We can do this in a couple of ways. If we want to go to the slower route, we can go to settings and then we can scroll all the way down and click activate the developer mode. There is, of course, a faster way to do this, which I prefer. So you see this little monkey up here? I'm going to turn it off. That actually turns off developer mode. You see the monkey's got his eyes covered. If I want to go back into developer mode, I can click that monkey, and it puts us in developer mode. That's pretty quick. The way that we get this monkey, and we need to be in Chrome for this, is we go to Odoo Developer Add-ons, or extension, I guess, but it knows what I'm talking about. We're going to go to Odoo Debug. Okay, you see the little monkey? I've currently got that, but for any of you that are in Chrome and you want to be in Chrome, it works better for Odoo, go ahead and add it right here. Okay? So now we've got that monkey so we can get into developer mode a lot more easily. So, what does developer mode do for us? Well, let's turn off the monkey real quick and I'll show you a few things that change. Okay? So we turn that off. You see there was a little scarab bug up here. That actually provides us a few tools that are really, really useful that we'll get into later. But really we're just talking about being able to see stuff right now. The other thing is in the settings menu, if we go into it, we'll see now we have a bunch of other things that you didn't have before. The biggest thing is the technical menu. Now we're going to spend a little bit of time on the understanding behind developing in Odoo. Okay, so some of you, and I'm, I'm willing to guess a lot of you, may not have dealt with a concept called relational databases before. Relational databases are built on a series of tables, or as Odoo refers to them, models. These models are related to each other in different ways. Everything in Odoo is connected in some way or another. So the idea behind relational databases is that you don't want to duplicate information, okay? So you could potentially look at these tables or models as spreadsheets. I'm sure many of you have dealt with Excel spreadsheets before and keep a lot of data in them. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we don't duplicate information. So on a sales order, if we were to keep it in Excel, we would have the customer, the customer address, um, their shipping address, maybe their contact information. We may have all of that in the same spreadsheet. We just don't want to do that because it's not as efficient. So what we do instead is for the sales order, we have it tied to a customer, which in Odoo is a contact. That contact then has a name, they have an address, they have payment terms, they have a lot of other information that's connected to them. That being said, there are a lot of relationships inside of Odoo. So we would have a sales order that is tied to a customer. Tied to that sales order are sales order lines which represent the different products that we're selling to people. Those products are actually linked, well, the sales order line is actually linked to a product which then has a name, a type, a bunch of other information. We need to understand this structure because there may be information that we want to store on a sales order that is already stored on contacts. There's a special way we can do that inside of Odoo. Or maybe there's an additional field that we want to keep on contacts. Maybe we want to be able to come in and say favorite chocolate. Now that may seem silly, but depending on our business, there may be a type of information, an attribute, or as Odoo terms it, a field that we want to store for contacts or for sales orders, potentially for products. 
With those concepts in mind, we're going to hop back into Odoo. So we're going to go to Technical. We're going to scroll all the way down to our, and I skipped it, our database structure, and we're going to go to Models. So remember, models are our tables that contain specific types of information. Okay, so we have contacts in here, we have products, we have sales orders, we have sales order lines, we have our journal entries, we have a lot of different stuff in here, okay? So let's go ahead and find one that makes it easy for us to discuss this. So we're gonna go to sales orders. Okay, and inside of here, we can see all the fields that are related here. We can also see the access rights, record rules, notes. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff here, okay? Let's go ahead and look at a field real quick, one that will make a fair amount of sense to us. So anytime, or at least most times in Odoo, when a contact is referenced, it's going to be referenced as partner ID. Okay, so normally what we're going to see here so we're going to see, okay, this is a field type of many to one. This is a relational field. This means it ties us to another table or model. Okay. Um, we're going to see the name, the field label. This is how it's normally going to be addressed in that table, sales order. Okay. And we're going to see the related model. So we're going to stop here for now. Now you can see what developers see and you can understand to a certain extent the back end of Odoo and how the data interacts. Okay, so we've talked about fields and models, kind of the structure of the data in the back end. Stay tuned, because next time we're going to talk about how you show that to people, how you have them interact with it, and that's very important.